Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. It happened, everything went to zero except Bitcoin, XRP, and Luna, this coming from Stefan Hubert here, posting this screen grab of coin market cap. Look at that, guys. Could you imagine if the entirety of the crypto market went into only three coins? Well, of course, this is a glitch. Um, you know, we might see something like this, though, one day, perhaps when regulatory clarity arrives and um, people realize that, uh, you know, the cryptocurrency that they are holding does not solve a problem. Big money will likely flow out of a lot of these coins, 99% uh, by some estimates, and flow into the coins that do solve a problem. Of course, XRP will be one of those coins. And I don't think Bitcoin's going anywhere anytime soon either. Uh, I got Bitcoin up here, $40,000.300. Trading sideways, still haven't seen too much movement for the king of cryptocurrencies. As you guys can see, we're still trading on very low volume. And so, um, you know, this is just a wait and see situation right now. Bitcoin has basically just been vacillating in this channel. Um, in this trading channel for a long time, over a year now. So what are we going to see? Mike Novogratz here chiming in with this, brought to us by Boncrypt XRP. He says Bitcoin won't rally aggressively as Fed hikes the rate. So Mike Novogratz, the billionaire cryptocurrency investor who heads Galaxy Digital Holdings, said Bitcoin is likely to continue to trade in a range this year with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates. So Mike Novogratz also uh, thinking that we are going to trade in a range for Bitcoin. So this news kind of sits in the middle of positive or negative sentiment, trading in a range, meaning that we will likely not see uh, volatile swings for Bitcoin, at least as per Mike Novogratz. I don't think Bitcoin can rally aggressively until we get a pause, Novogratz said during a TV interview on Bloomberg Crypto. Novogratz noted that he had earlier forecasted a 2022 range of $30,000 to $50,000 for Bitcoin, which was little changed Tuesday at about $39,200 in New York trading. The largest digital asset by market value has surged last year to a record high, along with other risk assets. Because of pandemic-related liquidity, the Fed has provided. Now with the Fed about to tighten, investors are re-evaluating risk, along with the consequences of the Russia-Ukraine situation. Uh, and so here's a quote from Mike Novogratz. Bitcoin is a narrative story. It's bringing people into the community. It's hard to bring in new people when their house is on fire. With the war in Ukraine contributing to market volatility, Novogratz said that there's zero chance the Russian government can use cryptocurrencies to circumvent sanctions, something some lawmakers have expressed concerns about. Ultimately, though, Novogratz suggesting Bitcoin going to continue to trade in this range here. Uh, he is estimating anywhere between thirty dollars to $50,000. Interesting, considering we've ultimately seen Bitcoin trading in this range for over a year now, and that we are expected to see more of the same. So not too much in terms of ups and downs with regards to the crypto market, at least uh, not as per Mike Novogratz's estimation. Again, very, very different than what we have seen in previous bull runs. And, um, you know, of course, these bull runs have gotten longer and longer over time, right? We got the 2013 bull run, uh, the 2017 bull run, this extended out for longer. And then, you know, if we take a look at what we're experiencing today, 2022, we did start seeing this upward momentum, but likely just consolidating here throughout 2021 and uh, perhaps more into 2022 before we take off and make new highs for Bitcoin. So 2022, a wait and see year, maybe by the end, maybe by quarter four, we might see something different. It's interesting because the Bitcoin narrative is not cooling down. Michael at Val 5 Links, bringing this to our attention, candidate for Senate vows to make Bitcoin legal tender in the US and he vows to make this his primary objective. This is Brian Solston. He has promised to focus on making Bitcoin legal tender should he be elected. The science, technology, engineering, and mathematics and privacy advocate announced on his Twitter on March 15th that he pledges to make the flagship digital asset legal tender his primary objective. Here's a quote. I declare my candidacy for U.S. Senate. Making Bitcoin legal tender in the USA will be my primary objective on the Senate floor. Bitcoin is the great reset. That's what he tweeted out. In the US, legal tender refers to all currencies and coins issued by the government, such as the US dollar and Federal Reserve notes. As such, new laws recognize them as a means of settling public and private debts, as well as meeting all financial obligations, such as legal fines, damages, or payment for taxes. So we have seen um, already different uh, states allow the use of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies uh, for these purposes for tax payments, uh, as just as one example. And so Solston is saying, I want to actually make Bitcoin legal tender in the United States. I want to add to our current array of options. And so if uh, one should want to pay their taxes or whatever, or I mean, anything really, I guess, in Bitcoin, I want that to be legal. 
Should Salston manage to join the Senate and successfully advocate for Bitcoin to become legal tender, it would mean that citizens would be able to use the digital asset to pay off debts, among other things. The original creditor would not necessarily be obliged to accept it, but the act of tendering would absolve the debt nonetheless. And clearly he knows about the World Economic Forum's Great Reset agenda. Uh, the Great Reset Solston mentions is the name uh, of the World Economic Forum initiative. Of course, as we know, this organization has set uh, dimensions to build a new social contract that honors the dignity of every human being. Klaus Schwab, the WEF founder and executive chairman, said there was a need for a Great Reset. And so uh, this is just explaining what that is, but Solston clearly understanding the need for this, understanding to uh, allow people freedom, freedom to decide what they want to do with their finances. And so, hey, if he gets elected, perhaps Bitcoin could be legal tender in the US. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. Uh, some Ripple news here, guys. Wrath of Kahneman posting this. Ripple user IDT. They've purchased Leaf Global Fintech, a provider of digital wallet services in emerging markets, serving unbanked customers in certain countries in Africa. They provide services in Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya to unbank customers. The Leaf wallet is available on smartphones, non-smartphones, and other mobile devices that allows customers to store, send, receive, and exchange currencies on their phones domestically and across borders. So interesting they're mentioning smartphones, but also non-smartphone devices and other mobile devices, uh, I suppose tablets. And so that was one of the things that I've always wondered, you know, for, for the people who might not have smartphones and use other types of phones or other types of mobile devices, as they mention here, how would this benefit them? I suppose you would need connectivity. And so even if you do not have a smartphone, uh, you know, this technology is still available to you. The Leaf app is available on the Google Play Store, according to IDT. So some interesting news here with regards to Ripple user IDT. Originally, that was called the Boss Revolution app. And so uh, now they're providing services expanding into Africa, namely Rwanda, Uganda, and Kenya, those countries in particular. And although no Ripple use is confirmed uh, as per this tweet, it is interesting to note that uh, they are serving unbanked customers, something that Ripple has uh, certainly focused on, definitely mentioned in speeches, talks, interviews, you know, whenever they were being interviewed uh, way back when in 2018, 2019, those were the high talking points. Anyway, gonna move on guys, Cryptic Poet mentioning this, Ripple partner Alan Sari Exchange teams up with NIPL or Nipple, <laughs> is that what they're called? To enable real-time payments to India. So we've been hearing quite a bit about the Al Hansari Exchange, uh, but now they're partnering with NIPL. They are a UAE-based foreign exchange and worldwide money transfer company, and they recently signed an agreement with NPCI International Payments, the international arm of National Payments Corporation of India, to offer customers real-time remittances to India. The partnership was sealed as Al Hansari Exchange continues to align its strategy to the joint UAE-India vision statement that aims to advance the India-UAE comprehensive strategic partnership to new frontiers and new milestones. And uh, so guys, here's just uh, another article demonstrating how Alan Sari Exchange did tap RippleNet uh, not too long ago, actually, back in October of 2021. This was so that they could get remittances to uh, Malaysia through Money Match. So uh, an interesting partnership. We are seeing Al Ansari Exchange continue to diversify, continue to expand their partnerships. And, um, you know, this is happening in the UAE. We know um, the Middle East over the last year or so has been a, a great adopter of RippleNet technology. We've heard news coming out of Kuwait, coming out of Qatar and other countries in the Middle East. Uh, anyway, this is just another development in that area of the world. Wanted to thank the Cryptic Poet for posting that. Another one here, guys, from the Wrath of Kahneman. Uh, he's tracking this Ripple user Bcash, okay? We've, we've heard about Bcash in the past. It is a remittance partner with MTB. So this is a company in Bangladesh. And with Bcash, we'll launch a 24-7 digital cash management facility for distributors of Bcash. Here's the announcement here. With a view of enhancing the bank's digitized transaction facilities, Mutual Trust Banking Limited, or MTB, and Bcash, a leading mobile service provider, launched 24-7 digital cash management facilities for the distributors of Bcash. This fully automated service will make the distributors' lives easier by using the service. Distributors of Bcash will be able to generate e-money, which uh, is their main commodity, with the balance of MTB account. Uh, they will be able to use the service 24-7 throughout the year. So, uh, you know, making this seamless. This is what global finance is going to be about. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because you do not need a middleman to uh, facilitate these transactions. It's all gonna be done on the blockchain. Kamal Qadir, Chief Executive Officer of Bcash, and uh, Syed Mabuber Rahman, 
Managing Director and CEO of MTB jointly announced the launch of this service as a ceremony was held at the MTB Center, the bank's corporate head office at Gulshan in Dhaka recently. So more Ripple partners uh, teaming up together, Bcash, we know a Ripple user, now they are partnering up with MTB, so uh, I guess indirectly. This means that MTB in Bangladesh also has the capability to run on Ripple and will in fact through this cash management facility. As per Wrath of Kahneman here, uh, only remittance is Ripple, but perhaps more possibilities of foot. And so we generally tend to see this, right? They move in with one corridor, they kind of test the waters, and they see how successful it becomes, and then uh, they work towards more corridors. Uh, Wrath of Kahneman also noting that uh, there's a lot of movement lately. He posts some other uh, articles with regards to other Ripple partners. Another one down here uh, that has to do with Bcash. So we are seeing movement. Uh, Wrath of Kahneman says, does it use Ripple? I do not know. Bcash clearly does. And they are a remittance partner for MTB. So yes, but unknown if it is in this product or not. However, you know, if we are seeing the 24 seven reliability of the product, um, you know, of course, in this part of the world, they, they, there is a need for the fast, cheap, efficient transactions. So uh, I would not be surprised if they are running on RippleNet. I mean, I guess it could be another technology, but it would not make sense considering Bcash is already a Ripple partner. Will Ripple play a further role for Bcash in managing liquidity? It's something Ripple has mentioned in the past, but not in the context of Bcash. So it is not confirmed now. However, uh, all signs pointing to, well, I mean, eventually running on Ripple. If not now, probably sometime in the future. However, uh, you know, in a lot of these uh, regions of the world, we are already seeing that regulatory clarity. Even if we are not seeing it in the United States today, this coming from James K. Filing, guys. News update coming out of the SEC. Democratic SEC Commissioner Lee this is Heron Lee, I believe, or no, Allison Lee, sorry, to leave agency after midterm ends in June. So the SEC is down yet another commissioner. Uh, the SEC commissioner, Allison Lee, plans to leave the agency after her term ends in June, but will remain in office until a successor is named. My term as commissioner expires in June, this is what she said, of this year, and I have notified President Biden that I intend to step down from the commission once my successor has been confirmed. Uh, Lee's departure would come as the agency tackles an ambitious agenda of rule changes that would affect public companies, brokers, Wall Street banks, and investment funds. So an interesting time to leave, um, perhaps strategic. Maybe she doesn't want to be the one saddled with having to decide uh, or having a hand in deciding how cryptocurrencies are going to be regulated in this new financial framework for the US. Uh, the SEC would still maintain a thin two to one Democratic majority. However, as it continues to await a replacement of the empty Republican seat vacated by Commissioner Elad Roisman in January. So they still have not uh, filled Elad Roisman's uh, position either. A commissioner since 2019, Lee has previously spent several years, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so just giving uh, a little bit of her background there. Interesting though, she is a Democratic commissioner. Uh, and so we're down one Democrat, down one Republican. I wonder who they are going to choose next. So I mean, a shakeup in the SEC. The SEC has been under uh, a lot of pressure as of late. And just adding to that mounting pressure, I don't know if you guys saw this from J.W. Verrett. Upon my term, so he tweeted this out, upon my term ending on the SEC's advisory committee last week, he was on the SEC's advisory committee. I took the chance to give Gary Gensler some strong words about his abuse of digital assets. Check out what Gary Gensler's response was. First, I'm going to show you a clip of J.W. Verrett here. Listen to this. Back to the SEC's regulation of digital assets, I want to urge the SEC to consider the proposal I offered by way of a public rulemaking proposal for the SEC to open public comment with respect to digital asset regulation doesn't commit the SEC to doing anything, but my digital asset regulation Genesis block proposal would offer uh, the commission, the collective wisdom of crypto lawyers, digital asset lawyers who've been working diligently on these issues. We encounter that nuance in our IEC hearing on this. I encounter it in my securities law regulation course. Look, on the one hand, it's ridiculous for the 33 Act to treat miners and node operators as underwriters or to apply cookie cutter proxy rules to the voting of governance tokens in a DeFi protocol. On the other hand, I think a lot of people in the digital asset and crypto communities would love to see standardized disclosure about tokenomics and about auditing of smart contracts in a particular project. I think the digital asset regulation Genesis block proposal can help the SEC to achieve that and uh, ultimately help digital asset owners like me rather than threaten their the value of their interests with over-application of the Howey test. And so I, I hope that my proposal will get sincere, sincere um, consideration. Thank you again. I will miss all of you. 
I will still heckle the IEC from the sidelines. Just kidding. I will, I will, but I will be here. I will be writing in some comment letters and I won't be far. So um, I hope you will all stay close and stay in touch. <laughs> First, I want to say a great outgoing statement there. I will be heckling the SEC from the sidelines. Uh, no, but n not not really, but kind of, yes, really. He will be continuing writing letters, uh, giving his suggestions. So again, this is J.W. Verrett ending his term on the SEC's advisory committee. And listen to what Gary Gensler's response was. Can I, can I just, please, Chris, Chris, I mean, Paul and J.W., I hope that you're not going to go that far away, at, and we can only help you along in healthy life, J.W., uh, because your input, even if sometimes we disagree, I have found your input, and I look forward to, to hearing more, is always uh, uh, informs the debate and and is uh, it's thoughtful, and, and uh, so... Keep coming, coming to us with the issues. On comp Keep coming to us with the issues. Uh, Gary Gensler trying to take that as uh, well as possible. Uh, it sounds as though, anyway. The tweet thread continues down here. J.W. Verrett saying, I want to join the fight for digital asset freedom. And many folks have been fighting a long time with these issues. And then he tags a whole bunch of people here on Twitter with support of thought leaders like at Kobe here in the DeFi community. Um, my digital asset regulation Genesis blog proposal is my first effort. He links it down in here. Uh, it merely calls on the SEC to open public comment on the unique issues that digital assets face. Summary of the proposal uh, is in Cointelegraph. Uh, so an entire tweet thread here. J.W. Verrett, I will link it in the description if you guys want to read uh, some more of his work. Uh, J.W. Verrett, we appreciate you. Also, do you know that the SEC's XRPL node is a validator node? <laughs> so that question brought up by Tag XRP here. Something that we heard about in the past, uh, wondering if they are still running it. Uh, Jeff at ISO XRP down here saying, sounds like you are privy to some malpractice, shady business that has been going on at the SEC. Hopefully you will do the right thing and help to set all this right and do right by all of us investors that have been hurt by this. The arrogance of Gary Gensler makes me sick. Uh, so on and so forth. Again, I will link this in the description. A lot of great uh, tweets in here. But I thought it was important to note, again, somebody on the inside at the advisory committee uh, with these parting shots. I mean, in a respectful way, I, I guess they weren't really parting shots the same way Jay Clayton announced a lawsuit against Ripple the day before he decided to leave. John Deaton from Crypto Law here also commenting on this. Outgoing SEC advisory committee member fires off criticism to Gary Gensler on his handling of the digital assets as he leaves his position. This is the same J.W. Verrett who said in May 2021 that the SEC should drop its litigation against Ripple over XRP and has forcefully criticized the agency's regulation by enforcement policy in crypto. So, we know where JW stands. It was kind of nice to hear that on his ongoing day, especially uh, since we know he does support Ripple and XRP's stance. And the fact that, you know, they should have never been sued because they were just not given the clarity that uh, most of these cryptocurrency companies have been questioning from the beginning. Lima Sierra Tango down here saying, wow, clearly the SEC staff have had enough. Nobody wants to be a part of that government outfit that is now forcibly trying to diminish the evolving tech that the world has worked hard for. Uh, all for the sake of pleasing corrupt banking buddies. Yeah, if you really want to know how a company is doing in general, ask their employees. This is coming from Sam Call here. Uh, sounds like he should be one of the first ones subpoenaed to see what he knows about Ethereum Gate coming from Frank F. So, a positive and straightforward statement here uh, on J.W. Verrett's last day on the SEC's advisory committee. Do you think anything will come out of it? I mean, Gary Gensler's uh, reaction here. I mean, um, you know, he wasn't terribly put off by it. You could see he was a little strained, probably uh, getting sick of answering some of these questions. I think these are all indications, though, guys, that uh, this is moving in the right direction. This is moving in the way that Ripple wants and uh, essentially, uh, by extension, the entire cryptocurrency community wants as well. The clarity is paramount. These companies just want to be able to do business freely in the United States. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.